Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to do multi-band sidechain compression. This will allow you to take better control over your uh, side chaining and also be able to make your side chaining sound a lot more natural. Um, especially in live recordings where side chaining is kind of shy, you know, people shy away from it quite a bit in live recordings because it doesn't really sound natural. Um, so we're going to try to figure out a way that we can make it sound better and more natural and less noticeable but still effective um, right here I got a I got a kick drum and a bass which is in my opinion it seems nine out of ten people that are asking questions are asking how do you get your bass and your kick to sit in the mix and in my opinion there's some people that be like, well, pan it left and right. I think that's stupid. It's panning things to make them fit is, it doesn't work. I mean, it it works. If you're listening to it in the right position and or in headphones, it works. It's going to sound better. But, but I'm talking about being able to keep these both straight down the middle and make them fit and make them work together and it not be so noticeable and one way we can do that so I keep hitting my mic stand with my chair one way we can do that is by using something called multi-band sidechain compression I don't know if that's what it's actually called I kind of just made that up but it makes the most sense and basically basically what we do is uh, the part that we're really worried about is the sub frequencies uh, so basically anything below 80 Hertz we'll say that's, that's what we'll, be, we'll reference at today anything below 80 Hertz we want to try to make them fit fit together and uh, I want the kick to be nice and pronounced and have it have that thump um, I, I took an EQ to it and I kind of over exaggerated the low end so we can really hear what's going on and we can really test this out but I do not want that mid range of the guitar to disappear every time that kick hits because that's where your your ears are really going to notice it if you can get that that side chaining really tight in the sub frequencies but let the mid range exist naturally you're not really going to hear that side chaining, but when you A, B it, it's going to sound a lot better. So, what we're first going to do is uh, we got to create our multi-band side chaining effects rack. So, we're going to take drop a multi-band effects. Control G is going to put it into an audio effects rack. And then Control D is going to duplicate duplicate your uh your audio chains so let's solo the first one this one we're going to keep just the uh the mid-range and the high-end data so we're going to take and turn these both down and then we're going to move your threshold all the way up drag down now you're applying 200 decibels of gain reduction on your low low frequency so that is, you're not going to hear that. And we're going to do the same for this one, but the exact opposite. We're going to do that to the mid and high, and uh, we're going to get rid of those frequencies. So let's drag that all the way down, drag that all the way down. Uh, turn our volume down, our input and our output down. Now... See, we're getting 300, 350 some decibels of gain reduction there. 300, 256. A lot. You're not going to hear any of that. So the internet. This is really, this technique right here is extremely useful. Not only for this application, but this is going to help you. Doing this can help you apply effects to certain frequencies attack for certain frequencies for certain things it's really it helps you split up i've even took in on my reverb sends 
do this and apply a different reverb to the low end, to the mid range, and to the high end. Sounds great. All right, but enough with that. I'll probably make a video on that now that I think about it. Multi band reverb, genius. Um, let's get back to the task at hand. This is pretty simple. We're gonna go to our sub. We're gonna take Control R. We're gonna do mid plus high. Oops. And then we're gonna do sub. And you can even take this a little bit further. Um, uh, map your uh, crossovers, whichever crossovers you're going to be using. We were talking about using, I'm going to do 85 hertz is going to be our crossover. So let's listen. Maybe, maybe a little higher. Let's do 90. Now that's all of our low end frequency data. So let's listen to our kick. Um, this is gated. This has a gate on it uh, and an EQ. Just to boost that low end so we can really over exaggerate. So let's listen to this together. During these parts right here, that kick loses all of its thump when stacked up against that bass. But when you listen to it over here, it's still got it. So let's listen, listen here. There's no thump, no thump right here. But when the bass clears, you really get that thump. And that's what we want the whole time, even when this bass is playing. So what we're gonna do is on our sub chain, we're gonna add a compressor Enable side chaining, and we're going to have audio one, which is our track that has our kick drum on it, is going to trigger that compressor. And this is just applying that, it's just applying the side chaining to the sub frequencies. So let's start to mess with this. First off, I'm going to do this to a four to one. Um, when I'm doing side chaining from the kick to anything else, I like to use a high ratio. I'll probably actually, let's do six to one. This means that all I have to, right when this little tiny, right when the transient hits is when it's gonna do the most gain reduction. And I don't have to, I don't have to have the threshold too low to apply a decent amount of gain reduction. And that gain reduction is also gonna have, I'm gonna have a lot of control over the release of that gain reduction because all the the decay of the kick isn't going to be triggering it at all just that initial attack that huge transient transient you see there you I'll show you what I mean see I it's not very far under that threshold but a very decent amount of gain reduction is happening now let's let's switch it back to the two point uh, two to one ratio. It's a lot more gain reduction, and I don't really have to do much. Now this release, we're gonna do it kind of pretty tight because I really just want the transient of that punch to kick through the mix. I mean through through that bass really. Now, one thing you should notice is that this mid and high is not ducking at all away from that mid, from that kick, which is great because that makes it sound that tricks your ears into not hearing that side chain at all. But so let's a let's a b this. That's with the side chain, not without. Now with it cuts through a little bit better. Now what we can even do is kind of mess with our crossover. Let's put this back to its default 120.
And if we really, 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 really want to, we can add a second compressor to the mid and high data. And we'll enable the side chaining, have the kick trigger it. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this to a 4 to 1. Um, and we're going to barely apply some gain reduction to this one. Now that kick is really cutting through that bass, but that bass is still sounding very, very natural. And we have more we have more gain reduction happening on the sub frequencies than we do on the higher frequencies of that bass, which allows us to trick the ears into thinking that nothing is really going on. very subtle but it sounds great well, let's over exaggerate it and then we'll be able to hear exactly what's really going on you can really hear what's going on now all right hope this helps you clean up your mixes and helps you think about side chaining in a different way uh, this is very effective um, also another application you can use this for is uh, clearing is uh, compressing just the mid-range frequencies of a guitar when you got vocals going and then when those vocals go away that mid-range of the guitar will fill back out and that can really help um, especially for your uh, mono tracked guitars um, to help clear out that way in the mono space or if you have a lot of guitars stacked up it can really help clear out that mid-range area for the vocals to ni sit nice and good and cut through the mix because nine times out of ten the vocals are probably more important than those guitars and you can kinda get away with uh, cutting a few decibels out of that mid-range when those vocals are going out and not really being able to hear it except for you will be able to tell the difference with and without it though alright this helped you guys I which I hope it did that's why I make these videos I want to help you guys out I want to spread the knowledge um, please like subscribe comment uh, comment your thoughts on the video also, if you guys uh, want anything to learn, uh, I know I'm not that great at making tutorials. I really suck at it, to be honest, but I like spreading the knowledge, and that's why I'm here. Um, so, yeah, do all that great stuff, and I'll keep making these videos. See you.